Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 13 of the F123 Lancia career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend, four races to go of the season and it's safe to say the championship is continuing to heat up. We are currently just 26 points back from Valtteri Bottas who leads the way but fifth place overall in the Drivers' Championship. You could make the argument that really sensibly now it's probably a five-way title fight between the McLarens, the Red Bulls and myself here. Nine points in it between McLaren and Red Bull at the top of the table. We're just trying to make sure uh, that we beat out our Alpine and Aston Martin come the end of the season. But yeah, the Singapore Grand Prix last time out was absolutely crazy. I'm hoping we can have a stronger race this weekend, though, as we return to Suzuka. Um, but yeah, really now it is do or die for everyone in the top order because one mistake will be the end of your championship hopes. Well, I must admit, with F124 dropping next month, it is going to be weird. This is going to be one of the last times ever that Japan is towards the end of a Formula 1 season. And it's also the last race we've got this season that isn't a sprint race either. Qatar, Kota, and of course Brazil to finish off the campaign this year. So there is still a lot of opportunities to score some big points and to close in the gap to the front runners. Um, but yeah, we're going to really need four solid qualifying performances to end the year, of course. We took pole last weekend in Singapore uh, with a little bit of a Banzai final qualifying lap. Um, but yeah, if ever there was a track where we need to do that, Japan has got to be the one. It's nice and tidy through Dunlop, completely flat out in this car. It has got a lot of high-speed downforce, which is very useful. I think Sector 1 is certainly going to be this car's strongest around the lap. We have got quite a lot of downforce on it. Uh, but yeah, that just means we have a little bit more by the time we get towards the end of the lap. We've got a bit more time to find, but it helps us through the Casio Triangle. It's up towards the line then. Olgamo does a 27-7. We do a 26-3, so almost a second and a half clear on my teammate. And immediately we go P6. Less than a quarter of a second away from Lewis Hamilton, but that's only good enough for P7 at the moment. The margins are so fine in this series, but here we go then. One more lap here of qualifying here at Suzuka. I feel like there's definitely a pole lap in this thing, but trying to get it fully nailed is no easy feat. Get through turn one and then immediately you're on the brakes into turn two as Bossas continues to lower the fastest lap benchmark almost now into the 1 minute 25s as we navigate our way up through the S's. Oh, we were a little bit down by the end of Sector 1, but a nice line on the exit of the Degners throwing it deep into the hairpin. Can we try and get the power down on the exit? Oh, a huge snap of oversteer. Please don't say this lap is getting away from me as we make our way down in towards Spoon Curve. We want it to be two tenths up. We're two tenths down at the moment as we navigate our way through Spoon. Now this lap's gone. We have absolutely thrown it away right at the end of qualifying there and a bit of a spin as well. That is a disaster and it's at best, I think, going to be P7 on the grid. Well, there we go. Valtteri Bottas on the pole ahead of Lando Norris then. So a McLaren front row lockout and the home hero Yuki Tsunoda lines up P3 alongside Lewis Hamilton there. Four cars covered by just a tenth of a second. The other Japanese driver, Ayumu Oasa, will have to work his way from 18th place on the grid. But he does like qualify his teammate, Zhou Guan Yu. 27 brutal laps ahead of us, though. It's time for the Japanese Grand Prix. Quickly, though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video welcome along then to the magnificent suzuka international circuit a stone's throw away from isa bay in the beautiful japanese countryside what surprises lie in wait for us today at the japanese grand prix it's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race 
Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sonoda, Hamilton, Sainz, Russell, Firestarter, Leclerc, Magnussen, Gasly, Ocon, Verstappen, Albon, Ricardo, Perez, Oscar Piastri, Iwasa, Hulkenberg, Fittipaldi, Liam Lawson, Joe, and Theo Porsche. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Well, here we are then, trackside for the Japanese Grand Prix, and clearly the team starting to embrace our aggressive nature towards the end of the season, because that is a very, very risky one-stop strategy here, but it's exactly what we're going to try and do. There's always the chance for safety car around this venue as well, but just want to try and stay out of trouble on lap one and try to move on through the order if possible. It's five red lights for the Japanese Grand Prix. And it's a light so and away we go, or not particularly, if you're Carlos Sainz or Yuki Sonoda. Hamilton tries to have a look past Norris as we are three wide down in towards Turn 1. And I'm just going to get shoved off the road, as we would expect there. Still side by side with Carlos Sainz. And immediately, we've had a DRS failure. I don't quite get how that happens one corner into a Grand Prix. Um, but I guess this car is Italian, so it, it's gone pretty far before it inevitably breaks on me then, but still the McLarens 1 and 2 at the front of the field. Very frustrating for us, there was Hamilton immediately trying to apply pressure to the homeboy. I'm sure the Japanese fans would love to see Sonoda pick up a podium here, just like some former Japanese drivers in the sport, Kimui Kobayashi. And I believe, uh, did a Yuri Suzuki score a podium here as well? I think it might have been Kobayashi the only Japanese F1 driver to score a uh, podium at the Japanese Grand Prix back when he used to race for Sauber. Of course, they have now become Porsche in this series then, but McLaren instantly trying to stretch their legs. This is why we need to try and move through the order as soon as we can here to not let them break free. But I'm worried that we're going to have an Aston Martin shink roadblock. That's so why you can see how much Eva, we are on the brakes there behind Hamilton into the final corner. Sonoda's on mediums as well, so that's why we need to get round him. So you have Bottas leads Lando at the front. And we just haven't quite got the legs to get a run down towards turn one. It's Russell already into the pit lane. What's happened to him? Well, let's ride on board then with George Russell ready for the start of this one. Just work out what happened, how he ended up with that front wing damage. You can see behind his former teammate in Lewis Hamilton and everyone on the right-hand side, seem to get a slightly better launch. Hamilton just cuts in front of him there. And as we go three wide in towards turn one, Russell just on the inside. Oh, he actually swung in and then swung back out of the Red Bull there. So an absolute nightmare for them. And yeah, Russell had to pit in the end of that one for a new wing. Oh, Hamilton, a little bit of a mistake out of the second deck. And just a little moment of oversteer. And we've got to go for it down the inside of the Ferrari driver. And through into P4, Hamilton is trying to stay in that fight towards the end of the year after that win at the Temple of Speed. But I think, yeah, 47 points back, I believe he is. That's a tall order with four races left. Using the DRS against Yuki as we make our way through 130R. We're closing in on that Aston Martin. Straight line speed here, actually way better than I thought it would be. As around the outside through the Casio Triangle. Keep the wheels inside the white lines. And two places in one lap then. McLaren, we are coming for you, but Yuki Tsunoda's not giving up on it. Aston Martin, they're down the inside. Oh, he wanted to barge me out, Tsunoda. Gave me absolutely no room there on the outside. He'll get away with it. Maybe there's a little bit of FIA home Grand Prix. Give him a chance. But Tsunoda, I'm staggered he didn't back out of that. Well, we are desperately hoping the team are going to get the DRS issue fixed quite soon. Because uh, we need it to try and get around Yuki Sonoda, I feel. We're staying close to the Aston Martin. But it's going to take so much battery. If we want to try and get a run on him. And Sonoda again, a little wobble at a spoon as we take plenty of curb on the exit then. Not afraid to take risk here. As you can see, those McLaren still just edging away. At the front of the field. Again, a nice line through the spoon corner. Can we take Sonoda by surprise this time to the inside? Oh, a bit of a lock up there, and Sonoda tried to turn in. And we actually pick up some side pod damage. 
I mean, I feel like he barged me off, I barged him off. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts and feelings on that move. But yeah, just a tiny snag of the break. And now, we might have lost a bit of downforce, I'm sure as well, because of that move. We are now probably the most hated man in Japan. Uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to need to leave the circuit with a lot of security when the Grand Prix comes to an end today. But maybe we've got to try and close in on Bottas up in front. Lando Norris between us. Yeah, taking points out of Bottas has got to be the big one. Well, as we approach one-third distance then, I think McLaren here have actually got a little bit of a problem right now. Bottas leading the championship and this Grand Prix is running slower than Lando Norris behind him. It's not going to be long before Lando gets back inside the DRS range of his teammate. That update on our DRS is now meant to be back online. I've got no idea whether it's going to work or not. But what do you do if you're Zach Brown at the moment? You've got both drivers in the championship fight. Whoa, do you let them have at it? Or do you tell Lando to play the number two role? As I'm just taking a bit of time out of the pair of them. Well, yeah, I am still monitoring the gap to those two in front. Lando Norris is about a tenth a lap quicker than his teammate here. So I think it's going to be one, maybe two more laps before he's finally in the DRS. But does Bottas take the first pit stop and try to undercut his teammate and build up a little bit of a margin again? Well, I mean, what do you do if you're McLaren? I'm happy in that regard that it's only really me in the championship fight down at Lancia. Um, but yeah, Verstappen after another torrid qualifying. He is on damage limitation today again. This is potentially a really, really early pit stop in the Grand Prix, but I think we've got to try and go for it at the end of lap 11. 16 laps on the mediums. But these tyres feel cooked. Well, we know now this is definitely the right time to peel into the pit lane as the tyre where warning light has just flashed up. But yeah, there's four seconds covering your top three in this Grand Prix. And how many times have we seen... No! No! Can we make it to the pit lane? I cannot believe that. Of course, out of nowhere. Norris is stopping now. Why he didn't peel me into the pit lane, but we are out of the Japanese Grand Prix. And just as I was saying about how mistakes late on in the year could be costly, that might be championship dreams over. Fantastic Grand Prix that was, and an excellent win for McLaren. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team, securing the win and proving that they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. Let's review the driver's standings. Well, not the result our points leader would have wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. Now, let's discuss Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I think for driver of the day, I'd probably pick Lando Norris. He lived up to every inch of his reputation today, and I think he'll be going home quite rightly a bit proud of himself. Let's move on to the constructors. McLaren continue to increase their gap at the top. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we go then. Double delight for McLaren this weekend, although Valtteri Bottas somehow ended up behind Charles Leclerc come the end of the Grand Prix. So for us, I guess it's nice the fact that Bottas 
didn't take the full host of points this weekend. But Charles Leclerc, like we said, joining them on the podium. Hamilton in P4, so Ferrari really did come on strong towards the end of the GP there. Sonoda couldn't quite get the home race lucky, but I wanted with P5, beating out Sainz, Piastri, Magnussen, Ocon, and Verstappen at the end of the GP there. Russell could only recover to P15, and it was myself and Theo Porsche who failed to see the checkered flag there. But yeah, that is a bitter, bitter blow to our championship hopes at the moment. It does mean championship-wise it's a 41-point deficit now to Valtteri Bottas at the top of the table. Uh, it looks like it could just be a McLaren fight between now and the end of the season there. But we are not going to give up between now and the bitter end. We are going to continue to try scoring as many points as we can and see where we end up. Constructors-wise, uh, we lose ground to Aston Martin and Alpine behind us. So I think that's going to be a battle that rages on to the end of the year. But McLaren as well there massively extend their gap over Red Bull Racing. But thank you all so much for watching nonetheless. Apologies that this ended up being a very short video today. But of course, I can't really do anything uh, about that. Um, so obviously not um, ruin it for people that haven't quite clicked on the video yet. You're going to have a few minutes of a blank screen now uh, so they don't know that something bad happened. Um, but yeah, we will return very soon ready for the Qatar Grand Prix.